Varric the Loyal is an extremely interesting character that comes to us with the House of Wolves DLC. He is the prison warden for the Prison of Elders and a new vendor in the Reef. In this video I will cover the fall of House Judgment, how Varric came to join the Queen, and whether or not we can trust Varric. My like and dislike for Varric has been a bit of a roller coaster. At first I was super excited to have a fallen vendor in the Reef, then I read some of the Grimoire cards and realised that he was no great warrior but more of a pathetic coward but now after seeing more of the cards i respect varix and he's an extremely interesting and humanized character varix is from house judgment and was a scribe as the name suggests house of judgment implies some sort of law and ruling over other fallen houses and the scholars defeat grimoire card reinforces this quote house judgment once kept codes of dignity and law end quote Varix also says that House Judgment was the closest thing to peace the Fallen ever knew. They acted like political advisors to the Fallen to calm any hostilities and prevent civil war. In essence, almost a government to the Fallen. However, the darkness came. And with the darkness came the collapse. The Fallen were hit just as hard as all other races. In fact, probably even worse. An event called the Whirlwind completely devastated the Fallen. House Judgment was almost completely destroyed and consequently lost political control over the fallen houses. Quote, Whirlwind ripped away the past. All honour lost. All hope. Judgment not enough. Cannot keep wolves from kings, scar from winter. Fell to fighting. Fell to hate. And that's from the Varrocks, the loyal Grimoire card. It was not instant mayhem following Whirlwind and the Fallen Houses did come together for a brief moment, which was actually at Twilight Gap. The Fallen aimed to take the last Earth city, though they did not attack Earth out of hate or to conquer, but to simply survive. House of Wolves was meant to join the Battle of Twilight Gap, but the Queen of the Reach stopped them from assisting, which is what I cover in the Reef War series. It was the failure at Twilight Gap that really separated the Fallen. This was the last time the Houses were seen working together, and of course House of Wolves eventually fell into a civil war. Scholus admits that the Fallen should not have fought each other following Twilight Gap, and should have continued to work together. Quote, We were fools, O children of the whirlwind. We fought each other when we most needed unity. That is taken from Ghost Fragment Fallen 3 card. Scholus reinforces that they came to Earth to survive, the hope that the Traveller would also protect them. Quote, Remember the hope that brought us here. Remember the age before the whirlwind, when Aether ran free. When we ruled ourselves and our futures as kings. We wanted more than glimmer and glints. Always remember that we came to this star in hope. I remember that we were denied. Remember the city of the death of children, the city that docks, which claimed for itself the great machine that might have saved us. Remember the city that even now sends its ghouls to murder our primes, starve our ether, and leave our young to die gasping. Curse that city and its name. The cursed is just. Scholus refers to the Traveller as the Great Machine, and sees it unjust that one race claim the Traveller for themselves. Once again, if you believe that Guardians are in fact evil, this paragraph is pretty condemning, referring to guardians as ghouls, murdering their primes, starving them of ether, letting their young die. And technically he's correct, we are ghouls, we are resurrected ancient dead, resurrected by the traveller's ghosts. Following the failure at Twilight Gap and the Queen's opposition to the House of Wolves, Varrocks appears to be the only survivor of House Judgment. With no more House Judgment to regulate the houses, House of Wolves fight amongst themselves for the title of Kel. Fallen, killing Fallen. The Fallen are now only seen as scavengers. They have no home, nowhere is safe. They fight amongst themselves and fight everyone else. Varix joins with Skolos out of survival and becomes his scribe. So why did Varix betray Skolos when the Fallen were struggling so much? Skolos was pretty much losing the Reef Wars to the Queen. The Queen had all these secret weapons that she had been using. The first was the Harbingers, which is basically a giant laser beam capable of destroying small planet-like asteroids. The next was the Carabus, which was a gravity weapon and had the ability to fling asteroids. Skulls had been sending his captains and barons to do most of the work during the Reef Wars. After the Queen unleashed the Carabus, taking out yet another captain, Skulls had to head to the front line himself. Skolos planned an attack on a military fortress known as Cybele, 
and this was his last hope. Varix basically predicted that Skolos was going to fail, and the Queen was too cunning and powerful. It is also hinted that Varix did not agree with Skolos' style of leadership. He did not agree with how Skolos came to power. He did not agree with Fallen killing Fallen. So Varix contacted Prince Aldrin's crows, that's the Queen's brother's crows, and told them Skolos' plan. Skolos, without knowing, went to Cybele to capture the fortress, and was basically ambushed and captured himself. Following the failure at Cybele, the Queen's paladins find Varix hiding, cowering. He has nowhere else to go, no one else to be. So Varix becomes Varix the Loyal, House Judgment, Envy to the Queen of the Awoken. At some point, post joining the Queen, Varix removes his own arms. Normally captains are demoted to dregs by having two of their arms removed by their Kel or higher in command. For example, Skolas actually demotes his Captain Picus to a dreg after the failure at Eos Clash, removing two of his arms. In the Skolas defeat Grimmel card, it confirms that Varric stocked himself, quote, The Awoken are twin to powers that terrify Varric. He docked himself again before he let the Queen's witches near him, the witches who raised Petra, end quote. Varric knows that he betrayed his own people and was either so guilt-ridden or so loyal to the fallen traditions that he removed his own arms. Also, he was given replacement robotic arms. This can be seen as quite symbolic too, because dregs can actually regrow their limbs. They are usually given this opportunity through battle. To me, this seems like Varix can never truly prove himself to the Fallen. He can never truly grow his limbs back and they have been replaced by robotic limbs. He can never truly rise again within the Fallen ranks. His betrayal was too great and that is why he now has robotic arms. Or you could say that Varix has accepted that the Fallen must merge with other cultures to survive. You begin to understand that Varix did what he had to, to survive to keep his house alive, to keep his people alive. Quote, The unfairness of it makes him want to roar. Why does everyone else have this patronage? Why do the Hive have gods and the Vex have time-sprawling minds and the Cabal have reinforcements? Why do the Awoken whisper to the stars and listen for the whisper back, the voices from the Jovians, the song in the dark? Why do the Guardians get the Great Machine's blessing? Was it like that before the Whirlwind? Were there fallen heroes crowned in ghosts who strode the battlefield fearless and full of light? Why do they tell stories about reclaiming the lost glory of humanity and no stories about the lost glory of Varix's people? Although we are quite sympathetic towards Varix, without doubt Varix is not trustworthy and given the opportunity he would betray the Queen. Varric says in reference to Skolas, Perhaps he will take back the Great Machine. Perhaps I chose the wrong side. It is not too late. That's from the ruling house, Grimoire card. You know what? I hope he does come back. I hope the Fallen return to their former glory and their powerful houses. I think it would be awesome to see humanity fall again and for Guardians to be the minority and have to scavenge and work really hard for rubbish weapons. Oh, <laughs> that's already how it is. No, but I think it would be great to go into even more of a post-apocalyptic world where Guardians are really the minority and the other races rule. For now, Varix is waiting. He is reduced to the prison warden of the prison of elders, setting up trial by combat, watching his fellow fallen perish in the prison, building a relationship with reef scavengers, all for the hope that one day he can rebuild his house of judgment, the hope that the fallen may still accept a peaceful and lawful rule. What is clear is Varix has dreg strength, and dregs are dangerous. They are desperate, they have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Thanks for watching, this is Mullen Games. Hopefully you've enjoyed this lore series. Drop a like if you have and leave a comment. We'll see you next time. Peace. I protected the reef. In the end, they all bowed before me. We showed them mercy.